the door, please. Me! Oh, Mrs. Y. Come in. You know, I was just about to drop by your room and speak to you about something. Yeah, what about? Um, I'm just sorry to say, Mrs. Y, but I just don't consider these cockroaches to be the most desirable roommates. Do you? <coughs> cockroaches, huh? Yes, precisely. Now, I have had very few experiences with cockroaches in my life, but the few that I've seen before have been the pedestrian kind. The kind that walk. These, Mrs. Y, appear to be flying cockroaches. I was shocked. In fact, I was literally stunned when one took off the floor and started to whiz around and around in a circle, just barely missing my face by a couple inches. I mean, I sat on the edge of this bed last night and I wept. I was just so shocked and disgusted. Imagine flying cockroaches. Something I never thought to be in existence, whizzing around and around in a circle. I just wanted you to know. Flying cockroaches are nothing to be surprised at. Hey, they have them all over. Even uptown they have them. But that ain't what I came here to uh, talk. That may be true, Mrs. Y. All I know is I won't sleep here one more night before these cockroaches have gotten rid of. They got to be gotten rid of at once. Now, how am I going to get the flying cockroaches from coming in through the windows? But that, however, is not what I came I don't here. know how, Mrs. Y, but there certainly must be a method. I mean, all I know is I won't sleep here one more night before they've gotten rid of. Why, if I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw one on the edge of my bed, I would have convulsions. I would simply die of convulsions. If you'll excuse me for saying so, Mrs. Hodgshell Moore, you're more likely to die from over drinking than cockroach convulsion. <laughs> oh, look, what is this? Larkspur lotion. Well, I use it to take the old polish off my nails. Oh, very fastidious, yes. What does that mean? There ain't an old house in the quarter that don't have roaches. But not in such enormous quantities, do they? I tell you, this place is actually infested with them. It ain't as bad as all that. And by the way, you have yet paid me this week's rent. Now, I don't want to get off the subject of roaches, but nevertheless, I'm here to collect that money. I'll pay you the rest of the money as soon as you've exterminated these roaches. Oh, no, you'll pay me the rest of the rent or get out. I intend to get out unless these roaches get out. Then get out then and quit just talking about it. You must be crazy. You can't get out right now. Oh, then what do you mean about the roaches? I meant what I said about roaches. They are not, in my opinion, the most desirable roommates. Okay, don't room with them. Pack your stuff and leave where they don't have roaches. You mean you insist upon having these roaches? No, I insist upon having the rent that you owe me. Right. Right at the moment, that's out of the question. Out of the question, is it? Yes, and I'll tell you why. The quarterly payments that I received from the man who's taking care of my rubber plantation have not been forwarded yet. I've been expecting them for several weeks now, but there seems oh, to be no, some no, no, no. Stop, stop it. I've heard uh, enough of that said. goddamn rubber plantation, okay? The Brazilian rubber plantation? <laughs> you think I've been in this business 17 years and haven't heard nothing about your kind of women? What is the implication in that remark? <laughs> I suppose the men that come here at nights come here to discuss the Brazilian rubber plantation. You must be crazy to say such a thing as that. Oh, I hear what I hear, and I know what's going on. I know you spy, I know you listen at the doors. I never spy, and I never listen at the doors. The first thing a landlady does in the French Quarter is to learn to not see and to not hear, but only to collect your money. And as long as that comes in, fine, I'm blind. <laughs> I'm deaf and I'm dumb, but as soon as that stops, I recover my hearing and also my sight and also the use of my voice. And if necessary, I call the chief of police who just happens to be an in-law of my sisters. I heard your argument last night about money. What argument, what money? Oh, he was shouting so loud, I had to close the front window to keep the noise from coming out on the streets. I have no mention of any Brazilian plantation. <laughs> Locks by lotion. To keep the polish off your nails? Am I in my infancy, am I? Right on par with the wonderful rubber plantation. Stop. It's you. Stop pestering this unfortunate little woman. Oh, the second Mr. Shakespeare enters the scene. Yeah, I heard your demon howling in my sleep. Oh, sleep? I think you mean your drunken stupor. I'll rest because of my illness. illness? What, have I no... You mean alcoholic. Don't try to pull that beautiful wool over my eyes. I'm glad you came in. Now, I repeat for your benefit what I just said to this woman. I am fed up with all you deadbeats. Okay, you deadbeats, you quarter rats, half-breeds, drunkards, the gender should try to get by on lies, delusions. Please stop that shrinking, it's not necessary. Oh, you with your Brazilian rubber plantation. Oh, the coat of arms that you got on the wall? The woman who sold it told me. 
uh, one of the Habsburgs, yes, a, a titled lady. The, the Lady of Locksburg Lotion, there's your title. Stop badgering this poor little woman. My God, what, is there no mercy left in this world anymore? I mean, what happened to compassion and understanding? Where's it gone, huh? I mean, where's God? Where's Christ? Look, su suppose there is no Brazilian rubber plantation. There is, I tell you there is. And suppose there is no rubber king in her life. Well, there ought to be rubber kings in her life. I mean, is she to be blamed that it's necessary for her to, to compensate for the cruel deficiencies of reality by the exercise of a little, oh, what shall I say, a, a God-given imagination? No, no, it's not my imagination. I'll ask you to stop spitting in my face those high-flown speeches of yours. 780-page masterpiece, right on par with Lady Locksburg Lotion as far as the imagination's concerned. Well, well what if I am, Mrs. Wyatt? Suppose there is no 780-page masterpiece in existence. Suppose that in existence there's no masterpiece whatsoever. What of that, Mrs. Wyatt? Suppose that I wanted to be a great artist, but I lacked the force and the power. Suppose that my books fell short of the final chapter and that even my verses languished uncompleted. Suppose that the curtains of my exalted fancy, they rose on magnificent drama. But the house lights darkened before the curtain fell. <laughs> suppose that all these unfortunate things are true. And suppose that I, stumbling from bar to bar, and as you say, from drink to drink, until at last, I can finally sprawl on my lice-infected mattress in this brothel. Suppose that I, just to make this nightmare bearable for as long as I have to be the helpless protagonist of it. Suppose that I choose to ornament and illuminate, glorify it with dreams and illusions and fancies, such as the existence of my 780-page masterpiece my impending Broadway productions and those marvelous volumes of verse just waiting in the hands of my publishers, just waiting for signatures to release them. Suppose that I live in this world of fictitious fantasy. What satisfaction could it give you, good woman, to tear it to pieces, to call it a lie? Look, I'll tell you this and you listen to me, all right? There are no lies but the lies that are stuffed in the mouth by the hard-knuckled hand of need. The cold iron fist of necessity, Mrs. Wire. So, yes, I am a liar, yes. But your world, <laughs> your world is built on a lie. Your whole world is a hideous fabrication of lies, lies, lies. Now look, I'm tired, all right? And I've said my say, and I have no money to give you, all right? So please, leave this poor woman in peace. All right, go, get out, go, get away, get out of here, leave her alone. Tomorrow morning, or out you go, okay? Both of you, both together. 780-page masterpiece in Brazilian rubber plantation. Baloney. Roaches everywhere, wall, <laughs> ceiling, floor. Place is infested with them. Oh, I know. I suppose you didn't have any roaches on that Brazilian rubber plantation. No, of course not. It was immaculate. It was always immaculate. The floors were so bright and clean, they used to shine like mirrors. And the windows, I'm sure. <laughs> suppose they commanded a very lovely view. Indescribably lovely. About how far was it from the Mediterranean? The Mediterranean? Only a mile or two. I do dare say that on a clear morning, it was possible to distinguish those white chalk cliffs of Dover that's just across the channel. Yes, very clear weather it was. Thank you, mister. Oh, Chekhov, Antoine Pavlovich Chekhov. Thank you, Mr. Chekhov. I love it. I love it.